BA Bytes, student teacher research from the team behind Emma and Tom Talk Teaching. Okay, so this is BA Bytes with Lainey Codd from the BA Primary QTS programme. Lainey, tell me, what assignment um, are you going to talk to us about today? What was it asking you to do? So I'm going to be talking about the independent research project the year three students completed on the BA Primary Education course. And really the independent project is asking you to explore an area of your interest while on practice with while on clinical practice in year three of your course. So the independent project is to inform your own practice while you're out teaching on your placement. And tell me, how did you decide what you wanted to focus on and why was that important to you? So within my first clinical practice, I had really, I had an immediate kind of interest in creativity in primary education and it was through kind of observing a, an inquiry based learning style of teaching that it re I was really drawn to how creativity can be implemented across all the areas of learning and experience. While prior to it, um, prior to my first placement, I assumed creativity would just be within expressive arts. So I wanted to kind of explore it further within my clinical practice too, looking at how creativity can be defined in learners, what impacts creativity, and how creativity can be used across the curriculum. And somewhere along the line, literacy came into the equation didn't it yes so tell me how did you refine it for this assignment to be looking at that link yeah so i was looking through like wider reading and literature on creativity and i found a lack of research on what impacts learners creativity and then I found a really interesting article by Willemson et al that alluded to the link between academic ability and creativity skills in learners and it found a really strong correlational link between numeracy and literacy ability and creativity. So I found it really interesting actually to kind of look at how, liter how, how creativity links in with lots of other attributes in learners and I wanted to narrow it down to just exploring one academic cross-curricular skill so I chose literacy um, and looked at the kind of phonics level phase and how reading ability and comprehension skills impact on how a learner performs in a creative way. Lovely, thank you for that. Okay, so you got on yourself to the stage where you decided what your focus was, you've narrowed it down. Um, did you then have to start thinking about what pupils you needed to work on this with? Like who was going to be sort of best place for you to work with um, with regard to this assignment on a school level? How did you choose um, and, and why really? So I was placed for my um, clinical practice too. I was placed in a year two um, year group and I wasn't really picky with what kind of year group I was placed within for this research because I think any year group it's interesting to look at the creativity of the individual learners so I started by reviewing the class literacy data to kind of define I wanted three participants who each represented a different level of literacy ability so I looked at the class reading levels the results of um, their phonics phase uh, diagnostics and kind of we came up with a class average with my mentor and then defined the three the top literacy ability the class average and the lower literacy ability level and we picked three participants all the same age and all female participants as well was that was that intentional the 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 the, the choice to work with female participants was that or, or did it matter uh, for me I kind of I was I wasn't kind of um, particularly interested in either gender but I thought in order to kind of eliminate the individual differences between the participants you wanted to kind of keep keep them as similar as possible with the one kind of variable differentiation differentiating being literacy ability Thank you for that, that's really clear. Okay, so presumably then you had to think about how you were going to intervene, how you were going to measure the impact of that intervention. Yes. So tell me how you thought that through and, and what decisions did you make? So within my kind of um, 
my wider reading and researching to define my research question, I found that there's a lot of contrast in opinions of what creativity is and what it looks like in primary education. So with all these kind of contrasting views, I thought I needed one view that I would use throughout my project to keep it as, because it's such a subjective concept, I wanted to keep it as quantifiable as, as I could. So I decided to view creativity through the perspective of the curriculum for Wales. And creativity and innovation are deemed as integral skills within the curriculum for Wales. And so I thought by focusing on three of the skills within the creativity and innovation integral skill set, I would be able to quantify such a subject subjective concept as creativity. So I chose to observe generating ideas, risk taking and identifying opportunities as my kind of lens for creativity in these learners. Mm -hmm. um, and that's really interesting that you you need to make something that can be quite difficult to nail down yeah. to some really specific so then what methods did you choose and why were they going to be the best ones to measure impact yeah so as creativity is so subjective i found that the way i was going to make sense of the creativity in each learner was through primarily observations but i did adopt a mixed methods approach so with the observations i was looking at how the learners authentically use their creativity skills across three contexts and i wanted to use each context to focus on a different area of learning and experience to kind of view how because interest can have an impact on creativity as well. I wanted there to be a broad range of context so that each learner had the opportunity to kind of showcase their best creative skills. So I did a science and technology inquiry for one of the contexts. We did an art-based junk modelling session and we did a more literacy-focused creative task as well to kind of get a broad range of how these skills were transferred across each of the areas in learning and experience. And then my other method to obtain data was through questionnaires, where I focused on the learners' own perceptions of their creative skills, and they ranked themselves on a traffic light system with each of the skills to just see how they perceived their creative abilities to be. And we did that before the three observations and after to see if there was any change in their own perceptions. And um, for anybody who's done observation as a research method in the past, unless you make those quite precise, yes. you can end up having loads of data. So yeah. what were you, how did you frame your observations? Did you, did you use anything to log? Uh, like, what were you looking for when you were observing? So I was looking for, um, as I mentioned before, the um, integral skills, the three defined integral skills, they really helped in kind of focusing those observations because you could, you could watch them for a whole lesson and look at everything they did and interpret it in a creative way. But I think having these three defined kind of quantifiable skills really helped in saying, that's identifying opportunities, that's risk taking, that's generating ideas and keeping it as focused as it can be with such a subjective concept. And did you, did you, did you literally tally when that was happening? How did you record it? I wrote, I had kind of a boxed up kind of grid with each skill going down the side and I would write the examples because at least it was intended to be qualitative data because in different ways each learner presented. I wanted to kind of look at how each learner, like to what extent they would use each skill. Because they could have, we could have one example of risk taken that's minimal risk, whereas you could have a much larger risk from another learner. So kind of to draw those comparisons of how each skill was used. And for you, why was it important to have a questionnaire that was directly addressed to the learners? I think with such a learner-led curriculum coming into place, it's important to identify 
how the learners feel about their own skills because I think mindset from my results as well I think mindset is such an important part especially with skills such as like generating ideas and risk taking that requires quite a lot of confidence if they were showing low levels of risk taking low levels of generating ideas I felt like it was quite um it was more to compare with the results of the observations to kind of be like oh that is why they acted in that way as a result it could have been because of their mindset and their confidence level in creativity that's interesting so when you're just external observer interpreting something but you're not inside the head yes. of those learners, yeah. did you want to kind of have that triangulation yeah i you? think it's important because it's so as an observer it's your it's only your perception of something you know you see things but they may not be as the learner intended them to be there could be more there to it than meets the eye so I think it was I thought it was an important factor to have to compare and sometimes those kind of observations and the results of the questionnaire married up and sometimes they contrasted and then it allows you to think about your results in a different way and it offers a new perspective into the kind of interpretation. So we're getting towards the results now but before you tell tell us what you found just remind us again who were your three learners in your sample and what was distinctive about them? Yes so we had child A who was the higher literacy ability learner really strong um, reading ability, really confident in comprehension skills and overall very academic and really academic learner. Then we had child B who was the class average so progressing well, presenting an average year two level of reading, writing, comprehension skills and then there was child C who was the lower literacy ability learner and she had come from a Welsh school so it kind of it kind of provides some kind of um, understanding as to why she was a lower literacy ability learner. Thank you. Okay, so we've got your three children in your sample. Yes. What did the observations and the questionnaires tell you about your inquiry question and what you were trying to find out? Yes, so it was very, it was really interesting because child B, the class average um, literacy learner, showed an average level across all three skills which kind of supports that there is a link a direct link between literacy ability and creative skills which was really interesting to to um, observe because it supported the research of Willemson et al however the findings of child a and child c directly contrasted each other so child A showed re a really strong ability to identify opportunities, particularly within the science-based inquiry. When a group's idea didn't work out, she was the first person to be like, I know why that didn't work out. This is how we would change it. This is what's wrong. So really good critical thinking and an ability to kind of determine a solution to a problem, really strong ability, but she really lacked in generating original ideas and a really low level of risk taking, which was really interesting because you would assume from reading how academically strong she is, you would assume, oh, they'd be able to generate these ideas and risk take and be strong across the board. However, child C, who was the lower literacy ability learner, showed a really strong ability to generate ideas and really strong risk taking. And it was almost as if she was using visual imagination because you would question her and say, how did you come up with your ideas? And she'd be like, I just saw them in my mind, you know, so it was really visual for her. And because of that, she was able to come up with, even if the ideas didn't work, she was able to come up with multiple solutions and was really confident in experimenting. However, she didn't show strong signs of being able to identify why something didn't work. It's those like critical thinking, working out problem solving skills that she lacked, but she could come up with so many ideas and a lot of them would work, but a lot of them wouldn't work as well. Really creative kind of visual thinking. And then the results of the questionnaires were really interesting as well because child B and child C showed real confidence 
and I felt that that translated through to their ability to risk take because they weren't worried if they got things wrong and that kind of encouraged them to try things out and there was little regard of why things didn't work but they would just try something else whereas child A, the higher literacy ability learner, she had really low levels of self-efficiency and I think that kind of comes with from my observations I saw she would really try and be the first to finish so it was kind of a lack of regard for the creative process and a lack of engagement because they want the right answer and if they can't have the right answer they want to be the first to finish there needs to be that sort of aboveness they need to be the best and in creativity that's not the focus it doesn't matter how long it takes it's about the content of it, the process, the skills used. It's not so much about the end product. Fascinating. Really interesting. Yeah, really interesting. And I mean, I'd, lo- I'd love to get into a critical discussion with you about it because yeah. sometimes the product of creativity is important. Yeah, yeah. And actually, you know, so the, the mindset of Child A actually mm-hmm. probably helped them to make sure they had something yes. tangible. It's with that critical thinking, isn't it, from the finding a solution to something and that problem solving kind of style. Mm-hmm. But whereas when you're when she was given creative freedom to design something, it would be the easiest option. It wouldn't be any thought behind it. It would be what can I what can I finish first? What can I get looking presentable? What what solves this problem and what's the easiest route to reaching it? Mm-hmm. Which in itself is a great skill. It's mm-hmm. a great skill to be able to think about what is the fastest solution? How can I get there? Mm-hmm. And being the first to find that solution. Mm-hmm. But then I think with such a creative curriculum, you wanna nurture these skills of risk taking and experimentation because I think if you're always looking for the fastest route and the the quickest solution, you're really losing out on the whole experimentation along the way and finding new kind of possible routes as well. Fascinating as well. So obviously we need to bring this into land now. We yes. Conclusions. Yes. So what does this mean for you going forward as a practitioner? What mm-hmm. does this mean for the pupils that you serve? What yes. does this mean for anybody who's interested in having a look at your work from mm-hmm. the outside looking in? So tell, tell us what your conclusions were. I think the real main finding for me was to challenge individuals within creativity, not by academic ability, but as individuals, because across the board, within all the areas of learning and experience, there's different interests of each learner. And sometimes academic ability doesn't always predict the success of a project. It doesn't always determine which child has worked the best. You know, I think with creativity, there's such a broad spectrum of what's deemed as successful. And it's quite, it's inclusive, I find, because you don't have to be the most academically gifted. You don't have to be the most motivated either. It's, I think it's about finding an area of, of interest and allowing a child to explore that and just not simply viewing success as academic ability. I think with the, the changes to the curriculum now is focusing on harbouring these skills in learners and kind of encouraging them to be experimenters and be creative and trial things. So I think the main finding from this um, research for me um, is to challenge learners as individuals. And yeah, I think that was the main sort of gist of what my research kind of showed me. And going forward, it's definitely gonna be something that I implement into my practice. And I hope it will be an integral feature of my approach as a teacher. I have one final question for you, Lainian, and yes. it's about your learning, really. Mm-hmm. You ha- you were obviously tasked with doing an academic assignment here, yes. and yeah. doing some research. Do you think you would have reached the conclusions that you did had you not done this assignment? And I guess what I'm asking there is, you know, is there is there a good reason for teachers, practitioners in the field to be doing this sort of stuff in their practice? You know, even when they're not mandated to by yeah. their, by their assessors, by their their course leaders. Yeah, I think 
research is so important and I really like the emphasis that teachers can now complete their own action research because you can go into research with a perspective, complete your research and come out with an entirely different perspective because you're dealing with individual learners consistently. No learner is going to be the same. So I think research is in like so important in adapting your practice because education's always changing, the learners in your class are always changing, they're all individuals and I think it's important to continuously adapt your practice as well because I think if you're staying within your approach I think it's not going to cater to the learners who you are teaching and the ones who you are trying to encourage and support so I think research is a really important part of teaching that I think now is being looked at as an essential part of teaching because it's con there's just always consistent change and do it complete in research is supporting that as well and allowing practitioners to kind of develop their own approach, adapt it to the learners they've got within their class at that time. So I definitely think it is something that I'm going to take with me into my practice. Now, I said this was going to be the last question, but I lied. <laughs> this is the last question. You had to uh, put together an infographic. Um, yes. Number one, was that... Why was that important? And, and in terms of like sharing your research, how useful was it as a as a medium for sharing that research? Um, and number two, you know, as a learner, what what did you get from from doing that? Mm -hmm. So I think it was really useful because it allowed you to summarize all your findings. And I think it's so interesting that everyone across this course did something completely different. And I think having those infographics allow not everyone has the time to read a full research project but I think an infographic kind of summarises the main points of it, the things that you want people to take from your research. It's why you begin your research in the first place because you want to share an awareness of something, share an interest. So I think an infographic is a really useful way of engaging people within your research. People who don't necessarily have the time to read a full research project, it's straight to the point, summarises your research and kind of gives you the main takeaways, what you want people to take from your research. So I thought it's been really, really useful as a way to kind of summarise your findings. Great. Um, and anyone who's about to embark on this particular assignment now, yes. um, any top tips for them? I would say go with your own interest because you definitely need to do something you're interested in because that passion kind of drives the the research then i think if you're doing something you're not interested in it doesn't make it worthwhile because you want it to be something that's going to inform your practice you it's something you're going to become a little expert in like this tiny piece of research you're going to become an expert in it so you need to pick something that's worthwhile to you something you're passionate about and I would say use your experience from clinical practice one to inform what you're going to carry out within clinical practice two because it's a nice feeling that it's all married up at the end and you think within clinical practice one I established my interest clinical practice two I built on my research and then finishing that you've kind of gone on a little journey then, your own research journey, which was really, really nice for me. I found exploring my, my interests, it was good. Lainey, thank you so much for your time <laughs> today. Fascinating work. Um, and I encourage anybody who's watched this to go and have a look at the infographic. <laughs> thank you.